So we got in trouble with our disk drive starting to make an awful noise which we traced down to the uh, spindle which we took apart and then uh, eventually we get all the way to take the motor apart which was binding and you can see it's not very appetizing and there's plenty of dust that's probably gone between the rotor and the stator and Al found what the problem was when we took the magnet out after <laughs> this small pieces of the motor and here's what we found inside and where it comes from is a piece of resistor that comes from the fan assembly over here and this is this one so obviously it's there so it had been replaced can focus on it so they put a new one but the old one fell in it and eventually did bind the motor so we have to check if there is any damage and uh, it doesn't seem to be now we just have to put the whole thing back together Alright, plus goes here, minus goes here, and off we go. Aha! Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, it still makes a big deletion. Yeah. No, it's the bearing. So bearing. Long. Bearing the top bearing is too loose. Yeah. So what you want to do uh, is uh, get a new bearing. I wonder if I could put, I could change the tension on the back nut and see if that makes it better or worse, right? I don't know if it would be too much tension or not enough. So that's try number three or four, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's do that. Got it together right. I think it's fine. Okay, so that's spindle number two. That was our spare spindle. Just in case. This one consumes less power. A lot less. So it's much better. It's 415 volts and it's never run against the limit. So I think we put that spindle in. Okay, well, if we, if we should do run. Yeah, air flowing. Oh, that's a much nicer noise than it used to make. Come on. That's a ready light. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Not yet. Go for it. Three. Yes. That works. All right. Repaired. Who? Uh, what is launch? Scavenger. Uh, I've never launched that one. 
And then a little thing that goes down is mm -hmm. reading the disc. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. Yep, it can read all the way to the end. That's a good sign. Thank you all for the spindle. You're welcome. We just have to change the bearing on the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Master Ken uh, got his uh, network emulator uh, singing and dancing now. Uh, you want to give us a little tour of what he can do? Okay, the, the Beagle Bone here is doing two things. First, it's a gateway between the Alto's 3 megabit Ethernet coming in here and the modern 100 megabit Ethernet coming out here. The second thing it's doing is it's running a simulation of Xerox um, server software from 1974, um, written by the Living Computer Museum, so we can we can boot using that server software and and boot the Alto. And your your uh, your your Mac here it does nothing, right? It's, it's, it's just, just monitoring. monitoring. Exactly. So we're going to do something that no other computer really could do in 1974. So I'm going to turn off the disk drive here. So to get it to either boot, you need to uh, use. Uh, Several I, fingers and a nose, right? So I, I hold down backspace to tell it to boot off the Ethernet. I hold an apostrophe to tell it I want the network executive. Then I reach behind to push the reset button. And now if you watch the screen, it, it comes, its cursor changes as it starts booting off the network. And there it's brought up the network executive. Look, my no disk. So it, it, it got in OS basically from the server over exactly. the network. It was a completely novel concept at the time, right? Yeah. So now I can, um, I can start up FTP over the, the network. Um, you, you, need the, the you need the disk for that. FTP. There okay, now so the disk has come FTP. up and we have FTP. I can log in as the, the test user, open the connection to the Needlebone server, and now I can list the, the files on that server. Right, and then I can see it kind of going on in your little and server. And now we can re retrieve a file. And so now the, the file has been FTP'd from the server to the local disk. Right, so the classic use of, of FTP. And then you made even something more fun, you had it go outside to the modern world. So I, I made a, a gateway so that um, Alto can talk to modern servers. Like I'll switch to the Telnet window here. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to get that. So the Telnet is the window at the bottom. So now I'm in the Telnet window. I can say connect to google.com and it opens up a connection to google.com and fetches the raw HTML. Right. So we, we don't have a full browser yet. Um, but Alto is actually talking to the outside world. Yeah, which is amazing gymnastics here from uh, non completely non-standard Ethernet to the modern Ethernet. But there's also yet another testimony of how advanced that machine was and how prescient it was. Right? Yeah. And this is the latest one from Master Ken. He has, now that he has the Alto uh, connected to the network, he can download new programs and he has written one in BCPL, I understand, that calculates fractals. So here is a modern spin on the Alto. And it's very, very, very slow. We'll do it eventually. Yeah, he's our alto with a fractal on it. 
Mr. Mendel wrote would be tinkle pink, tickled pink. It's so pretty. 